you know, was it difficult to let go of the cello? Like, because it's something that you worked so hard to attain, right? Yeah. I think it was a gradual letting go. So even though I kind of took off my cello hat and put on my composer hat, mm. and it took me a while to even call myself a composer. I was like, yeah. that to me felt so serious. Like, I felt like I should have, like, powdered wig and tight, <laughs> and, you know, like, uh, I didn't go to school for it. I've never had a composition lesson, you know. It, yeah. Um, so I still I still played some chamber music festivals, and I, you know, I was lucky that I was I was always pretty quick to um, get back into shape. Like it didn't take me a long time to to get my fingers back in shape. So it could sit in the case for a couple months, and I'd take it out and crash course for you know some concert coming up. Um, so, you know, I still had a little bit of stage life, mm. performance life left while I was, you know, pursuing this composition thing. But um, it really wasn't, it really wasn't difficult to let go. It, it, I think there's, it's so, it's so funny, but like someone said to me when I left, um, life is short and operas are long. Mm. Um, there's so, operas are so long and yeah. you play so many notes that, to me, I felt like I was I was in the orchestra for 14 years, mm -hmm. and I felt like that was probably the equivalent of playing like 20 to 25 years in a regular symphony. Yeah, just because you you play so many notes, so I felt like okay, I've done it. You know, like I, I really didn't have that. Oh man, what if? Like mm. I was so happy. I felt like I'd done enough. Yeah, so, yeah. and I, and I got to the place. It's, I got to a place where I enjoyed being a fan, you know, like I liked going to concerts more um, and, and kind of not being so immersed in the classical world that, right. you know, I was such a purist or so critical or I just kind of liked becoming a, a classical music fan. Yeah, yeah. It was fun to go, you know, hear somebody play a concerto or Ravel duo or something that would always cause you know me to be really nervous or like oh man i hope i don't shank this big part <laughs> it was fun to just like go watch somebody else do yeah it. yeah so even though i was still in my 30s like i very much felt like an old time around like okay i've done it you know mm -hmm. i didn't really have anything left to prove so, yeah. yeah you know jeremy it's interesting listening to your story because you know, and to go back to your chamber music coach who told you, you know, you guys were talking about how music degrees are kind of bullshit. Right. And you just go do it, right? So mm -hmm. it's the, I kind of feel like even when you were a student at Juilliard, your teacher was like, turn up, you're not ready. But you were like, right. eh, well, I'm just going right. to go do this. Right. And then, um, yeah, you've, you've never taken a comp composition lesson. but. No. You were like, I'm just going to do this. Where do you think that mindset comes from? Because I know, you know, we were talking before we uh, ever press record on this, that right now, a lot of people are taking a good hard look back at how they've lived their lives and their, you know, how their career has gone, right? Sure. And one of the big fears that I know people have is like, what what gives you know me the right to go do something that I have no experience doing? Right. You know, where does your mindset come from? I think it was, I mean, not to get all Freudian about it, but I think there was <laughs> probably something um, that was in me from a very young age mm. that like, I remember I, I wrote a piano song when I was two yeah. And it was only it was only there was only two notes. Yeah. Uh it was called There Was a Tow Truck in the Desert. That was the name of the song. Okay. It, yeah. there, there was a tow truck in the desert. And that was it. And I would just play that over and over and over again until my parents were like, Okay, stop. You know? <laughs> um, but I and then I, even when I was seven or eight, I'd already been playing piano for a few years. I wanted to play electric guitar. Mm. And my mom said, No way. Like, I don't want an electric guitar in the house. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. And she said, there's this early morning strings program um, in East Lansing where you go 
two or three times a week before school starts really early in the morning and you go learn how to play a string instrument. Okay. So I started on violin, um, very quickly realized that the cellos got to sit down. They were the only ones that got to sit down. So I yeah. switched to the cello. Yeah. So I could sit down cause I was, it was so early in the morning. I, was so <laughs> I don't want to stand up. Um, and then cello kind of took off and I never got back to taking guitar. Mm. And then, so I think there was this thing kind of submerged and suppressed that wanted to create and wanted to, um, you know, make stuff. And as I got into my twenties and felt comfortable enough with how things were going, yeah, um, on the cello and at the Met, that's when I was like, oh, I'm gonna play guitar and start writing songs. And so I, I think it was kind of a natural thing, but it, it just the more I fed the writing, the more it developed. And, mm. um, but I don't think yet yeah, it, it is interesting in, in this time. Like, I mean, the worst example of it is this, you know, what Ivanka a couple of weeks ago, like try something new, like, mm. sure, you know, I can't pay my mortgage. I can't feed my kids, but, um, yeah, I'll just become a florist or like, yeah. what? It's, it's, <laughs> it's insane. But it, but if you, I think you're right, though, in, in, in that this this time, you know, there's enough of a slowdown that people can really take a good hard look at mm. um, where they're at, where they've come from. You know, people are doing all kinds of things like baking bread or, you know, I've I've really become kind of a coffee nerd in the last couple. Yeah. Of years, you know, getting into that. And but, it, it you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't think. I think you said something like, you know, what gives you the right or, 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 or you mm. know, just do what you want to do, you know, like yeah. just do what makes you happy. Right. You know? Um, I, I, when I used to, again, when I used to teach or coach younger musicians, you know, they're like, well, I'm thinking about going into music and I'm applying here and there. And like, what do you think? And, and I would always tell them, you know, if you can imagine yourself doing anything else, mm. you should do that because yeah. music, the music road is hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not for everyone. Um, and there's a lot of heartache and, and stress and, you know, how am I going to make ends meet? And, you know, I, I know so many talented musicians, incredible musicians that were like runner up, you know, at, for an orchestra job, like, mm -hmm. 30 40 times you know and never hit it and so i think you get to a point a point where you're like okay how, what do i want my life to look like yeah. you know what's going to make me happy like when i went to new zealand it wasn't i wasn't going there for my career i wasn't going there yeah you know because i thought the auckland philharmonia was you know the vienna philharmonic or something but <laughs> i knew that this unknown world and all the nature and beauty of New Zealand my, and, and a new experience was going to make me happy. So that was kind of why I went there. So, mm. you know, I know people that have joined the Honolulu symphony, even though they were probably good enough to be in the New York Philharmonic just because mm. they want to live in Hawaii. Yeah. So it just depends on what makes you happy. And, and, um, you know, if you're, I think what makes it challenging in classical music is that it often ends up being in major cities, right? So mm. it's like, you know, the someone who plays in the Pittsburgh Symphony is probably going to have a much higher quality of life than someone who plays in the San Francisco Symphony, just because right. Pittsburgh's a lot cheaper. But yeah, but it's hard to make ends meet in in big cities. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I remember my dad telling me that when I when I landed in New York. Um, you know, New York is not a cheap town. So. No, no. Um, so you know, as an extension of that, your dad tells you that, right? Yeah. But you decided to have this career change where you had this dream job where you right. were earning and you were making right. it. Yeah. And then you decided to leave it for, I, I mean, I know that by the time you left the mat, you were starting to compose, but did you have any doubts? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was definitely a roll of the dice, mm. you know? Um, but I remember like it kind of got to a point where the few people that I was talking to, I, I think anytime you're coming to the big pivot moment, yeah, getting to the decision is the hardest part. So mm -hmm. like, you know, gearing up for making the decision is, is take some time and 
take some research. And I, I started talking to some people that I, you know, admired and they weren't even necessarily musicians, but just, um, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this crazy thing. What do you think? Yeah. And, and, but once you make the decision, yeah, then it's pretty easy. Cause it's like, I've already made the decision. Sure. You know, certainly I had the, the safety net that the Met provided. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, you know, if I didn't, um, even though I finally had the time to put the pedal to the metal, like if, if things didn't work out, I could always go back. Right. You know? Um, but I think even before I knew if I could make it back or not, a couple months into it of having the freedom to design my own schedule and suddenly have the freedom to leave New York in October if I wanted to, or, um, you know, go to dinner three or four nights a week instead of like only on Sundays when I wasn't (laughs) working or something, you know, once I had a taste of that freedom to create my own path, that was enough for me. And I think I I told myself, you know, Hey, even if I don't, you know, make enough or, you know, I'm not as successful financially or, you know, as secure as I would have been with the Met. This is, this is worth it to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, to be in control of my own life. 